Hello, my name is Adam Colton and I'm an author and a blogger and neither a comedian or a political commentator. Although I'm going to attempt to do both those things now because I believe that it's a more constructive response to today's government budget announcement than sticking my fist through a window. Although Nick Clow might possibly disagree, he loves the sound of breaking glass. So pay attention, here's a quick political history lesson. A few years ago, we were told that when it comes to funding our public services, there is no magic money tree. Then, a few years later, we were all expected to have our own magic money trees when it comes to paying our ever-rising bills and rents. Now, it turns out that the government have had a magic money tree all along, but the magic money fruit on the magic money tree is only available for those who already have their own magic money trees and an offshore bank account. The rest of us will have to make do with a few vines, and on those vines, are sour grapes. It does seem that our politicians believe if you want to help the poor you should give to the rich. Now if you want to help the poor you should give to the poor. And they say we don't understand economics. Do they really think that these fat cats given a tax break will spend their money in our pubs, cafes and shops? To me it sounds like 3.1415927 in the sky. Pie in the sky? Okay, try this joke. What's the difference between our Chancellor, Quasi Kwarteng, and Quasimodo? With Quasi Kwarteng, it's us that get the hump. It does seem that this winter will be a winter of discontent for the majority. The rich will get a big cut to their tax bills, those in the middle will get a little cut to their tax bills, and those at the bottom that don't even earn enough to pay tax will get hypothermia. Many of our houses will be so cold that it will be easier to measure the temperature in degrees Kelvin. It does seem that our politicians are so out of touch with how ordinary people feel that they should pass a multiple choice theory test before applying to become politicians, a bit like you do for your driving test. Here's a sample question. How would removing a cap on bankers' bonuses and cutting tax for fat cats make ordinary people feel during a cost of living crisis? Is the answer A. Happy B. Contented C. Excited or D. Angry Yes, that's right, it's D. Angry Should they pass this first part of the test these wannabe politicians then go on to the second stage, and this would be to prove that they know how to use a dictionary. For example, when everyone was being encouraged to vote for Brexit, we were told that we would enter a new era of prosperity, and what we entered was a new era of poverty. Now both words begin with P, so they're quite close together in the dictionary, so I can see how the mistake was made. But how about this one? We were told that extending the windfall tax on energy companies to benefit all of us would thwart ambition. But to my mind, what it would thwart is greed. And greed begins with a G and ambition begins with an A. So I don't know how you mix those two up. So I wondered if I'd got it wrong. And I looked up the word ambition in the dictionary. And it said, a strong desire to do or achieve something. It didn't say a strong desire to do or achieve something if you're on over £150,000 a year. And what about levelling up? It seems politicians don't understand those words at all. I don't see any levelling going on, and for most of us, things have gone down. The third and final part of the test for future politicians is the most fun, for this is a test of stoicism. And for this, we would lock the candidates into the stocks and allow the voters to throw wet sponges at them until they give up. Originally we were going to use custard pies, but with rising food prices we realised we couldn't afford the custard powder. Stay warm this autumn, stay positive and good luck.